Da Tabernak. Hey guys, this is my review for Bone Cop, Bad Cop 2, a 11 year old sequel to a Canadian buddy cop film that was very funny, very dynamic, had a lot of Canadian stereotypes and a lot of Canadian riffs, like the whole relationship between Quebecois and Ontario, as well as some very over the top, very interesting characters, as well as an interesting way of being shot. There was a lot of low, close up Dutch angles. The film was always really in your face and it had this kind of Tony Scott mid 2000s feel without the ridiculous <laughs> editing or the spinny. This film loses everything that made the first one unique. There is absolutely nothing that stands out as interesting or creative in terms of how this film is shot. It is as boring as a daytime soap opera and the action, oddly enough, is actually pretty bland here and there. There are some very odd, very, I don't know, it looks like they're setting up for an action piece, but then you remember it's a Canadian movie and they probably wouldn't have had the budget for that, so then it all of a sudden just ends. And finally, the humor is almost completely gone. It is terrifying. Because the movie starts off and there's kind of this weird chase scene that's not like all that interesting. And then Colin Farrow and and Patrick Howard meet up and there's this part where he pulls the handbrake off of a truck and you're thinking it's gonna go roll into the river and then instead it stops because it hits a street light and it stops right there and that was funny but then that's it for the next 20 minutes until another joke is funny again right off the bat though during the opening credits I noticed a big red flag Patrick Howard who plays Inspector Bouchard is the only screenwriter for this film he had the concept, he was part of one of the people who came up with the concept of the original film, but he wasn't one of the screenwriters, there was other people for that. Same for the director, they don't have the same director in this film, and it shows incredibly. The story has none of the quirks that the first one did. The first one was about a guy who was killing off people who were not associated, associated with the Great One's trade. This one has absolutely nothing to do with Canadian jokes or Canadian politics or anything. It's about cars being stolen. And then it turns out to be a terrorist attack on the United States. It's, it's boring. You don't care about really the story at all as compared to the last one where you could relate to a lot of what was going on. This one you have almost no connection whatsoever and you don't give a shit about what's going on. The relationship between Colin Farrow and Patrick Howard is cool. There's still some good jokes, they laugh and they have some funny moments, but the banter is almost non-existent. That's the other thing too, this film is so slow. It does not have very good pacing unlike the first film. However, Colin Farrow is given an extra level of depth as he is dealing with an illness. And this is picking up 11 years after the story, and Colin Farrell is kind of in a bad spot. The guy even doesn't even look that good, too, and they really play on that, which actually kind of makes me worried because the guy's very thin, very gaunt in this film, so I'm hoping he's okay in real life. But in the end, the jokes are just kind of very sparse. There are some parts in the end that are funny, but it takes so long to get there that you almost fall asleep watching the movie. I honestly was like this throughout the whole film. It was terrible. You can see that Patrick Howard had a lot of influence on the story and how the film was made, and it really focuses on him. Colin Farrow is just kind of there. Now I understand in the Lethal Weapon movies, Mel Gibson was the main one and Danny Glover was there, but they required each other. Colin Farrow really doesn't do much until maybe the very end, and I just feel that he takes a back seat in terms of how much of an important character he was in the first film. There are some funny moments here in terms of how the Americans think we are as Canadians. That was okay, but some of it was so forced. Some of the humor was very forced. And when the film ended, I was just like, this isn't the same movie I watched 11 years ago. This is different, but different in a very unfortunate and disappointing way. So in the end, I will give Bon Cop, Bad Cop 2 a 2 out of 7. Anyways guys, that's my review for you. 
If you haven't seen the first film, it's on Netflix, at least for us Canadians. Go watch it. It is hysterical. It is fun. It looked like it was a fun to, film to make. This one is very shallow, doesn't take any risks in terms of story or jokes, and it's just a very weak disappointment in comparison to the first film. Anyways guys, that's all from me. See you guys next time.